hello guys in this video i'm going to show you how to set up an ad blocker on your raspberry pi now here are the requirements first we need a raspberry pi in this case i'm using the raspberry pi 3b with 16 gigs of sd card storage you also need your router in this case i am using the zte 5g router you also need a keyboard and a mouse you need a usb cable for power it may be micro usb or usb c and you need a card reader which we're going to use to create a bootable raspberry pi os now let's head to our browser and then, and then search for Raspberry Pi OS or Raspbian OS. Click on the first link to raspberrypi.com. Now scroll down and you should find all download options. Click on it. Scroll down. Now we're going to download Raspberry Pi OS with desktop image. You can see this is compatible with all Raspberry Pi models. So let's click on download and it should start downloading. After downloading Raspberry Pi OS, we also have to download Win32 Disk Imager, which you can search on Google. I'll also provide this link in the video description. So let's head to SourceForge and then download. Now after downloading both files, we can close our browser and then open our download folder. So this is Win32 Disk Imager and this is our Raspberry Pi OS. Now double click on Win32 Disk Imager to install. Agree to the terms and continue. Finish. Now let's extract our Raspberry Pi zip file. Right click and then extract file. So after extracting the file, let's see, this is our image file. Let's head back to Win32 Disk Imager. Select your flash drive under device, which is our card reader and our SD card. And then select an image file, which is our Raspberry Pi OS file. So let's locate our extracted folder. Select the file we extracted and then click on write. And it's going to write data to our SD card in the card reader. And successful. Now connect your SD card back to your Raspberry Pi and then turn it on. Now let's just proceed with the welcome screen. Next. Set up your country, your region. Next. Now set up a username and password for your Raspberry Pi. This is what you're going to use to access the operating system. Next. We can tick here to uninstall the unused browser and then continue with Chromium. Next. Skip software updates, but if your network is good enough, you could just update and then restart after the installation. So we've successfully installed Raspberry Pi OS and here we go. Now make sure you're connected to the internet and then open terminal on your Raspberry Pi. First we are going to run sudo updates and then sudo upgrade so we can fully upgrade our Raspberry OS package. So sudo apt update to update our Raspberry Pi and then sudo apt upgrade to upgrade with these updates. Now the next command is to install Pyho. Type it exactly as seen. Now it should take a couple of minutes to download and set up but you just have to wait um i think i made a mistake there let's go again after the download you should see a screen like this let's proceed okay okay pyho is a server so it needs static ip let's continue we are going to set that later so click on continue we are using ethernet so let's proceed Select Google DNS and then proceed. Block list, proceed with default, yes. Install the admin interface, yes. A web server is required, proceed, yes. We need a web server. We are going to enable query login as well. And then we are going to continue with show everything. Now you could make changes to this later on in the settings, but let's just proceed for now. It should take a few more minutes and you should have Pyho ready. And the process is complete. Now these are your login credentials which we are going to use to access Pyho. You can see the web interface address and the password as well. 
now keep note of that that is what we are going to make use of right now so let's head to our browser 192.168.0.200 that is my address slash admin and here we go now you can log in with your password so this is our pyho web interface now go to settings down here and then click on dhcp now we are going to enable dhcp server so click on dhcp server enabled and you can see our router ip address right there which we can use to access our router scroll down and then we can save the settings save now let's head to our router page 192.168.0.1 let's log in now this may be different depending on the router you're using now we're going to go to advanced settings on our router and then we're going to go to router settings and right here you can see dhcp server and it is enabled as well now under dhcp ip pool you can see where it starts from and where it ends now your router allocates a different ip address to each and every device connected to your router and it stays for around 24 hours before it resets to a different ip address so what we are doing here is to set a permanent ip address to our raspberry pi so we can use that to set up our pi hill server so what we aim to do here is set up a static ip that wouldn't change regardless of whenever we connect now let's head back to our router home page let's turn off internet access and then go through the list of connected devices so here you can see our raspberry pi there is an ip address and there is a mac address now take note of the ip address and also copy the mac address so we're going to tie the mac address to the ip address so it never changes the ip address so let's head back to to our router settings again now scroll down and we are going to find mac ip bind this is where we can bind the ip address to the mac address so it doesn't change and create a static ip so let's paste the mac address for our raspberry pi there and then also paste the ip address which is 192.168.0.200 and then apply now we can see that it has been added and it shouldn't change the ip address of our raspberry pi once it is connected to the router it should remain this same address this is the ip address of our router and if you take note the dhcp ip pool starts from 2 and ends at 243 now we are going to set it to end at 199 so 200 is allocated for our raspberry pi and then from 200 to 251 should be on our pi hole so let's save this first and then head back to our pi hole and then you can see under range of ip address to handout it starts from 201 and ends at 251 so any device that connects to our router should be given an ip address from 201 to 251 if that works correctly then that means our pi hole is running now one last thing we should set is to set the dns server of our router to 192.168.0.200 which is the raspberry pi address but we can't do that because our router doesn't support that so we are going to manually set the dns server for each device we connect to our router but in most cases it automatically just finds the dns without us having to do anything so i'm going to show you a test so you see how this works now let's connect to our router from our phone and if you go to network settings under this network profile and then scroll down you should see the ip address which is 235 that is the address this is where it ends and under dns click on it and we can see the dns server is set to 192.168.0.200 which is our piho address so let's test this is us running without piho and you can definitely see lots of ads from that to this other ad over here now let's run with piho and see the difference so this is the same site but now when we scroll down we can see the space for ads but the ads no longer show and you can go through the entire site and you wouldn't find a single ad you can just see the text advertisement so this is basically how to set up piho now let's log into our piho and then check the list of active clients and you can see my iPhone showing the 192.168.0.235 and you can see numbers of queries and it is using Pi-Hole which you can see by the right right there 
So basically this is how to set up Pyho. Now the default ad list is great but we can do better. So you head to firebug.net. Here you can get a list of suspicious links and ads which you can filter out with Pyho. So we can just copy any of the links. Make sure to read the description on this website. And then go to add list. Here we can paste the address and then add a comment to it so you can remember what that was for and then add. So this way we are filtering more ads and we are getting rid of more ads from sites we visit daily. So basically this is how to set up Pyho on your router. If this was helpful, kindly hit the subscribe button and turn on your post notification. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one.